first and goal from the one-yard line. Collins to the air, floats one, caught this time. Shockey, touchdown. He's New York City's newest sports sensation. All pro his very first season, Jeremy Shockey, the Giants tied in with the loose mouth, has become the NFL's number one cover boy. Sports reporters say the boyish bachelor hits the town just as hard as he hits his opponents. Brash and cocky, he's just the kind of guy New Yorkers love to embrace. In a town that makes it hard to get noticed, Jeremy Shockey's grabbing headlines, much like he hauls in touchdown passes. How does a small town boy from Ada, Oklahoma adjust to life in the big city? Well, if you're Jeremy Shockey, you just enjoy every minute of it. Here in New York City, he's living and loving just as hard as he plays football. Many say he's the new Broadway Joe. What was your first reaction when you found out you'd been drafted by the New York Giants? You know, I was happy. Um, no one really prepared me what was going to happen to the next level. And, um, you know, I had my draft party and had a lot of my family and friends over, and it was, uh, it was fun. And then New York called me on the phone. I left that day within a couple hours, went to New York, and uh, you still don't know until you get here. Like, you get here and it seems like all, every door open. Anything I wanted to do, I was, I, I was, I was able to do it. Any part, anything, I was able to, you know, to go and to have fun in those places. And I wasn't used to, in Miami, we were regulated. You know, we had to, you know, they were, you know, we were in college. Here, it just seems like I really didn't know what to expect when I got here. And, I was so bad at saying no to turn things down. I would just find myself going to every little function possible. You know, it was, it was pretty wild. Shockey's football career began in Ada. After high school, he had his heart set on playing for the Oklahoma Sooners. But new coach Bob Stoops didn't offer him a scholarship. You know, I was going to go play there. And um, John Blake was the coach. He got fired. Bob Stoops came in, and somehow I didn't get a scholarship, which is OK. A lot Did of you take that personally when Bob Stoops overlooked you? You know, not personally. I, I did at the time, but now I look back at it and it's just, you know, if I was in a new environment, you know, I'm not from Oklahoma, I don't know, I just, I'll regular keep my scholarships off to give them out when I know the community and give them out to people I know besides, you know, just coming in someplace. But, yeah, to an extent, then I went to Miami and what made me mad was he said, you know, you know, he don't, I'm sure he's not agreeing with me, but he, he said, you know, you're not going to play at Miami, you know. People there are good, you're not going to play there. And I'm thinking in my head, how's this guy, don't even know me, telling me I can't play to some school, you know. And, but you know, he's a recruiter and that's what they do, you know. So I have my, he's a great coach. My hat goes off to him. You know, it just didn't work out. It's something told me to go to Miami and it worked out for the best for me. And, um, and you the, played for another Oklahoma there, Larry Coker. What a great and coach. And Butch Davis too, right, my first Bush year there. there. So that was one of the things I went there because they said, you know, Coach Coker, I'm from Okima. And uh, <laughs> Butch Davis, where was he say he's from? Uh, Tahlequah. Tahlequah, thank you. I'm like, yeah. what? And I was telling him, like, okay, I will let the Oklahomans coach me. That worked out okay for you. Yeah, I got a national championship. Oklahoma got theirs, but uh, Miami got it. We got one, too. At the Nebraska 21-yard line, Dorsey back, looking to the end zone. It's touchdown, Shockey. After only two years in Miami, Shockey entered the 2002 NFL Draft. The Dallas Cowboys promised to pick him in the first round, but instead took Roy Williams from Oklahoma. Jeremy ended up going to the New York Giants as the 14th overall pick. And even though he's been plagued with injuries this season, Shockey did get credit for turning the Giants around last year. Jeremy, your amazing rookie season, all pro your very first year. Did you feel coming in you could have that kind of immediate impact? You know, it was, again, it was a new situation. I knew that it, maybe if they put me in great situations that I could, you know, make some plays. You know, I didn't think that I'd catch that many balls, really. I mean, in my heart, I did. But in my mind, I was like, you know, I probably won't catch that many balls because, you know, it's my first year. They, pull, they won't put me in situations like that. But they did, and I was able, I was, you know, lucky enough to get a couple of um, good plays and stuff that made a lot of highlights and, I guess, get a lot of hype because I'm in New York. Living here in the New York area, what do you miss most about Ada and Oklahoma? Obviously, here, you have to live on top of each other, and it seems like there's no space to do anything, you know. Back home, I was used to doing anything, you know, going outside with the shirt off, just, you know, basically being around nothing, just being out in the country. And here, it's really, it took a while to get used to. And in Miami, I even had some places to, you know, go away. Here, there's, you can't get it anywhere out of anybody's sight, and it's kind of strange, to tell you the truth. Shockey says he also greatly misses his family, especially his mom, Lucinda. The single mother raised her two boys all on her own. 
And today, when Jeremy's on the field, Lucinda's in the stands as often as possible. There's a mom right there. She says, he wasn't easy to raise, you know. <laughs> ESPN Magazine said in the cover story, uh, there's a lot of Lucinda in Jeremy. Which characteristic traits do you think you got from your mom? I don't know. I didn't read that article, so I don't even know. You um, don't read your press? No. Um, maybe, your probably strength. because how hard I work. You know, she she worked hard her whole life, and I understood that a little kid that whatever I want to get in life, I had to work for it. And um, you know, being at this level, I always obviously had to work for what I've got. A lot of people think it's they've I've been handed and I had a gift, and, but. You know, everybody in this profession is athletic. Everybody's fast, everybody's this. So it's just really the main focus is, is how hard, can you outwork people? And, you know, can you outwork them on the off season? Can you outwork them this season? So I think, you know, a lot of people are probably more athletic than me and faster and bigger and stronger, but I think I just outwork people. And that's probably where I got from my mom. So you really have had to work for what you've gotten. It comes natural to me because, you know, I'm not a person that always puts my hand out and wants something. I always, if I want something, I'm gonna go get it, you know, regardless of what I gotta do. and. Uh, I kind of took that direction in football, and uh, I still kind of take it in life. If I want something out in life, um, you know, no matter what it is, I try to go out there and you know work to get it. I don't ever ask just to get it for you know a freebie. Jeremy, there's been a lot written about the fact that you grew up without a father mm -hmm. in the house, and how that's impacted you. How do you think it's impacted you? You know, I really a lot of people had their opinions, but mine, you know, I really wasn't, you know, when I was a little kid. They, Where's my father at? You know. Um, Where's, you know, I wasn't like that. You know, my mother did such a great job. I'm really fortunate because a lot of people always say, oh, it must have been hard. You didn't have a father. I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, there's people in, you know, in this world that don't have shoes on their feet. They don't have no food. And you're, you know, talking to me like I don't have, it's ridiculous. Playing on television today, do you ever think, I wonder if he might be watching? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, you know, he wasn't a man enough to watch when, when I wasn't something. So I don't even think about him, to tell you the truth. For those who do tune in to watch Shockey, they see one of the most passionate players in football. Larger than life off the field as well, this Oklahoma wild child has become the toast of New York, a town notorious for being hard to tackle. Which brings me to some of the things that we've read about you the mm -hmm. past year. Um, let's just talk about those and you tell me if they're true or false. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> At NEO, when you lost in a playoff game, mm -hmm. you ate the dirt on the field afterwards. So <laughs> you'd remember what losing tasted like. Well, you know, um, that was probably a reporter's quotes more. It was true to the fact that when I was at that NEO, I'm running, I'm playing, the game's over, my helmet flies off, I'm on the ground, and it, the dirt's already halfway in my face anyway. I'm tasting it because I'm sliding across the field, so. <laughs> you ate it anyway. <laughs> it was in my mouth, so I had no choice but to eat it. So, yes, that's partly true, but uh, in the same hand, it's a little false. Okay, here's another one. Sports Illustrated said, quote, not since Joe Namath has a New York bachelor partook so ravenously, <laughs> so openly of the Manhattan buffet. You think that's true? That's probably true. And uh, you know, I mean, I'm young. I had no family. I mean, the fact that I had no wife or kids, so you know, I had no one to, uh, you know, to anchor me down. I have a great family back home in Oklahoma, and um, really here I'm by myself. So you know, I always go out and have fun, and uh, a lot of that's true. But you know, at the same sense, I really don't. In football season, I don't go out as much as you know as people think. Okay, here's one more. You made a pass at Britney Spears, and she rejected. That you. is completely false. False. Well, I completely now false. I believe that. Now let me tell you a story. <laughs> okay. I was actually with the Playmate of the Year at this party. Believe that or not, you can believe it. It was true. I'm at this party, and um, you know, I'm, I know this guy. He's like, "Hey, Britney wants to meet you, or whatever," because you know, I guess she's a football fan or whatever. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't really go meet her. You know, she was surrounded by people. I know how it is when I'm around people and people come with me, I don't want to meet them because, you know, I'm just out to have a good time. So I say, hey, how you doing? And uh, we start talking and I left. That's it. And the next thing in the paper, people are saying I got dis by her. So if I, <laughs> you know, it probably is true to the fact if, you know, if I did try to hit on her, she probably would diss me anyway. So I guess it, I you could say it's true. I don't true. think so. <laughs> what, what do you think? What is it that women find so irresistible about you? No, not, not a thing. I just think I'm a good Southern person and I, you know, I, see, I always tell my buddies here, just mess with It's the accent that gets them, I say. <laughs> that Oklahoma the accent. <laughs> the Oklahoma twang gets them. No, I just, I think I'm a nice person. I like to have fun. And I think, you know, you sitting here interviewing me, you can really figure out how I am. I'm not this guy that really wants to be in the press, that wants all the attention. I'm just, you know, here to do a job. And I'm here to, you know, to help the Giants win. That's my main thing. And um, why not have fun doing it? I have fun on the field doing it, and I have fun definitely off the field in, in Manhattan doing it. So You just live large. 
No, I wouldn't say that. I just, <laughs> I'm real. Enjoy life. Yeah, I enjoy life. I do because, um, you know, there's no guarantees how long you're going to be here, you know. Um, I think my mother and my aunt really had a, you know, their mother was a strong lady and she got paralyzed and um, she was driving home one night and a car hit her. So she had no idea what was going to happen, you know, and the rest of her life she was young and she's paralyzed, you know. She can't do anything about it. So I just kind of look back and see how every day I want to make sure I live it. So if I die today, I'm, I'll be happy, you know, that I've already completed and accomplished a lot of things that I've uh, worked hard to do. Jeremy Shockey is enjoying his success, but of course there have been some stumbles along the way. His sometimes reckless rhetoric is making headlines all on its own. You've come up with some of the more memorable quotes in sports over the past year. <laughs> and after one of your recent comments, you said, okay, that's it. I'm never going to say anything outrageous you know, again. Just, it seems like everybody has an opinion on me. I turn it on. I'm, I'm watching TV. I turn it on and I see, you know, Mark Gassino talking about me. You know, he's got an opinion talking about me because he's from Oklahoma. But he, I never even met the man. So he's talking. And you dated, did you date his daughter? I've, you know, I was friends with his daughter. Okay. And she was one of my lady friends. I wasn't dating her or anything like that, you know. He, he has, you know, if, you know, it's fine with me, but me, at least meet me first. Shake my hand, look at me in the eye, talk to me for a little bit before you're going to make these gestures about me. When the last pass has been caught and your football career mm -hmm. is over, what do you hope people will remember about Jeremy Shockey? You know, that, um, that I was one of the, you know, guys that, that worked for everything I got. You know, nothing was handed to me. Um, I had all the odds going against me from, I don't know, wherever from me, not even getting a scholarship at high school. And I, you know, all the, um, you know, things that could have went bad didn't. They always went good. And after it's all said and done, everybody's going to say, hey, this guy really, you know, he's a great player. you got to watch him wherever he's at. And he loves to compete. And uh, he's, you know, hard to, you know, go against, but you know, in the same sense, I got respect for him.